Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. My name is Miss Estrick and I've been teaching for over 10 years and if you are new here then I am here to help you to get to grips with the most challenging topics in biology to improve your study skills techniques and also to help you to get the grades that you deserve. And linked to that last point exactly is my top tips for paper one as well as just wishing you all so much good luck for the exam tomorrow, if you are watching this the day that it's been uploaded. So tomorrow is the AQA A-Level paper one. The first time we've had an external exam in the summer in two years now. So what I wanted to do was share some last minute tips to help you feel more confident and to make sure you get the best grades tomorrow. Now I'm gonna keep this quick today because I don't want you staying on YouTube all evening when I know you've got other revision to do. So I'm just gonna keep this to four key tips to remember for the exam tomorrow. And I'm gonna jump in straight away with one of the big ones. And that is start on question 10 tomorrow if you're taking A-level AQA biology paper one. Question 10, which is the one right at the back is worth 15 marks and it's three long answer questions. Normally split as five, five, five marks or it could be four, six and five marks. So adding up to 15 in total. And these questions are typically knowledge based so it's been questions in the past like compare and contrast eukaryotic and prokaryotic DNA, or it could be describe the process of transcription. So start at the back on those questions, because that means if you do run out of time, you haven't missed those 15 marks, which are some of the easier marks to get quite often, and you can bank those marks straight away, boost your confidence before you do the rest of the questions. So that is tip number one. Tip number two, you are allowed to bullet point your answers or even present them as a table for AQA in every question except the essay on paper three. So what I suggest is for all of the questions that are more than one mark, bullet point what you think each mark is. Now that doesn't mean you literally just say a word in a bullet point. It is still a sentence, but instead of having to write continuous prose, paragraphs, which means you might waffle or you might lose track of where your marking points are, bullet point them so you can be quicker, more concise, and it'll be easier for the examiner to mark. And that means they're less likely to make a mistake, which they do make mistakes. Now for the tables, you might find this helps you to process the question, structure your answer better. So if you do have a long answer question that says um, compare, you could have whatever you're comparing as your two table headers. So prokaryotic DNA, eukaryotic DNA, and every row of your table would be a comparative point. My third tip is to read the questions carefully. When you're in the exam, it's so easy to make careless mistakes because of the adrenaline, you're rushing, anxiety. So make sure you are taking the time to read the questions carefully. Underline what the key command word is. So is it describe where you're saying what the pattern is? Is it explain, which means you're saying why that pattern is there? Is it conclude? You're then saying, what does that pattern mean? Or is it evaluate? where you're saying the supporting arguments or the not supporting arguments linked to whatever the statement is. But read the question carefully. My fourth tip is, if you are told to give an exact number of examples, do not give more than that. So if they say, give two control variables, and you think, oh, I might know three, I'll put three down, you know, what's the harm? This is the harm. If they've asked for two examples and you write down three and one of those examples you gave was wrong, that incorrect answer will cancel out one of your correct answers. This is called the list rule. And what it means is if you give more than you're asked for, you're essentially saying the examiner has to pick the correct ones and ignore the incorrect ones. And that's not fair. That's not actually showing that you knew the correct answer. So do not give more than you've been asked for. And if you're not sure, don't do this answer slash another because you'll end up with zero. Just take a guess, your best guess. So that is it. Those are my four last minute tips that hopefully if you followed those and you didn't know them before, could be the difference between a grade. So all I've got left to say is get off the internet for the rest of the evening. Make sure you are not working past 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. latest. Have a big dinner, have a good rest and good luck tomorrow. And I'll catch up with you on Instagram and TikTok to see how you found the paper. Good luck, everyone.